Welcome, family of God, to another teaching installment of When the Temple in Heaven is Opened, Everything Will Change. Get ready to dive deep into God's holy word as we discover his gems and jewels, where the Bible tells us it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it is the honor of kings to search it out, as we see how God declares the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things not yet done, saying his counsel shall stand and he will do all of his good pleasure. The Holy Spirit has a treat for us today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Revelation chapter 20, beginning at verse one. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him up into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him. Hallelujah. So that he should not deceive the nations anymore till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. Verse four. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to study your word once again. We thank you for calling us your children because you saved us by your amazing grace. And we believe for all the promises of God are yes and amen. And we know that it's impossible for you to lie. And so we thank you for the blessed hope, hallelujah, that is sure to come, that we are looking forward to seeing you at that very time when you descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And we know, O oh Lord, that the dead in Christ will rise first to meet you in the air as they assemble in the clouds. And then those of us who are alive and remain will also be caught up, raptured, our pot sowed to meet you in the air as we also assemble in the clouds for the first resurrection, hallelujah, includes those who meet you in the clouds, which is the table of showbread and the menorah. And Lord, we're going to be taken to your house, the Father's house, where there's plenty of abiding places for anybody who wants to take you up on your offer to come. And we thank you that we said yes, Lord to your will, to your way, to your word, to everything, because we trust in you alone, O oh Lord. And Lord, we know that for the seven years that are going to be happening on the earth, the time of Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation, we know that at the end of that period of time, Lord, that you will come back on a white horse and the armies of heaven will be following you on white horses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you will come to this very earth to establish your rule for a thousand years. And at that time, the thrones will be set up. Hallelujah. And you will give us our positions in the kingdom. And you will also raise to life all those who were beheaded during the time of Jacob's trouble. Who did not worship the beast or his image. Who did not receive the mark of the beast in their forehead or in their hands. And they will all be raised back to life. Hallelujah. For you are the quickening spirit. Hallelujah. And for everybody who will be raised back to life at your second coming to the earth. Hallelujah. This will complete 
the first resurrection. And so we pray, Lord, that you would expound upon this truth as we go through your word to study, to show ourselves a proof. A workman who needed not be ashamed because we rightly divide the word of truth. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for the sanctifying power of your indwelling presence as you sanctify us with your truth, for your word is truth. And we thank you, King Jesus, for being our Savior, our Lord, our Master. We're unprofitable servants at best. We've only been doing what we have been commanded to do. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us to, uh, to be allowed to do your will. Help us, Holy Spirit, to do it. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, glorifying you, Heavenly Father, in the matchless, self-sacrificing name, the name that is above all names, Jesus to Christ of Nazareth, we pray and ask it all. Amen. Well, hallelujah, saints of God. Just want to get right to it. There was a question about Revelation chapter 20, where... The first resurrection is mentioned and a question was posed about what does that mean? What are my thoughts about it? Well, I want to give you what the word of God says about it. Hallelujah. I want to give you what the word of God says about the first resurrection. And so we see the first resurrection completed. Don't miss that. The first resurrection completed in Revelation chapter 20 verses 4 and 6. And we see that the completion of the first resurrection will include all those who were beheaded during the time of Jacob's trouble, all those who had a witness to Jesus, all those who were uh, beheaded for the word of God, right? Who did not worship the beast or his image, who did not receive a, the mark on their foreheads or on their hands. John said that he saw all of them come back to life and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Hallelujah. And God said that this is the first resurrection. Jump down to Revelation chapter 20, verse 5. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. Right? So everybody else who's ever lived, okay, including all those who died during the time of Jacob's trouble, God says the rest of the dead, everybody's still <laughs> in, you know, that compartment, okay, of torment, where the rich man is at still, right? In that compartment, all the dead who are down there, they're not going to come back to life until after the thousand years are finished. And they're resurrected in a body fitted for destruction, which is going to be administered at the time of the great white throne where they will experience the second death, right? Everybody at the great white throne judgment after the millennial kingdom of Christ, hallelujah, all the dead who's ever lived from Cain up to the last person who will ever be born that, die, that dies in their sin without the blood of Jesus, without forgiveness. All those people at the great white throne judgment will be cast into the lake of fire in a body fitted for destruction that will last forever. And they will go to the lake of fire on the last day forever. And they will be, you know, punished according to what their deeds deserve. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the first resurrection. So the first resurrection has an order. Hallelujah. Because God said, blessed, okay, blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Okay, so blessed and holy are you who have part in the first resurrection. And there's an order to this resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So everybody who's part of the first resurrection completed at the second coming of Jesus Christ to the earth, right? The first resurrection is completed in Revelation chapter 20, verse four through six. That's the completion of it. So everybody who was part of the first resurrection and the totality of it, which we're gonna go through, God says we're blessed and we're holy because we're going to reign and rule with Christ for a thousand years. Hallelujah. And so the order of the resurrection, which is the first resurrection, we find in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm just going to highlight uh, particularly verse 23. But um, it's 20 through 28 because we see the whole scope in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 
Uh, but through 20 through 28, we actually see the whole scope going all the way from the, through the kingdom to eternity. Where we see the, you know, Christ delivering up the kingdom after the millennial reign to the Father so that God will be all in all. Hallelujah. But I don't want to really touch on that. I just want to touch on the order of the resurrection, which is this first resurrection. Hallelujah. So turn to fifth, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'll begin at verse 20. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. Hallelujah. You see, God, I just, let me just do a little sidebar. I don't know who's listening, but you got people, you know, out here. They say, well, you know, I never asked to be born. You know, I didn't ask to come into this world. You know, why would God, you know, send me to hell? I didn't, I didn't ask to be born. Well, that, that's, <laughs> you, you got, you got a, you got an argument so you think, but God says, hallelujah, that the last Adam, which is Jesus Christ, hallelujah, he has now given you an opportunity to be born again. Yeah, none of us asked to be born into this world. And because our first Adam, our first dad, right, our first parents, Adam and Eve, because they disobeyed God and did not listen to the command of God not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and because of their disobedience, Sin entered into the world, and because now sin is here, death has also passed unto all men because all of us have sinned. We have that same sin nature, and none of us asked to be here. No, we didn't, but we were all in Adam at that time. We were all in Adam in the Garden of Eden, and so we have that same sin nature. But God, hallelujah, sent the last Adam, the seed of the woman, right? The seed of the woman, Christ Jesus, who... Uh, has been made unto us a quickening spirit. Hallelujah. Because in him is life <laughs> and life more abundantly. And now, yeah, you may not have asked to be here in the world, but now God has given you an opportunity to come to him so that you can be born again. You can receive a new birth, right? You could, you could reverse the curse. Hallelujah. You could reverse the death, the death clause. And you can now have an eternal life clause to your credit because Life will be in you because Christ, the hope of glory, will uh, be uh, your seal, hallelujah, when you come to him as a sinner in need of a savior by accepting his offer. Yeah, none of us has to be here. And so God has now given us a chance to be born again so that we can have a chance to be with him forever. Hallelujah. And this is what we see right here in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15. Uh, verse 21, for since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. So if you're in Christ, if you accept the free gift of salvation, right? If you believe the gospel that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, he was buried and on the third day he rose from the dead. If you place all your faith in what Christ has done, for you personally, and you believe it, you know, God says you have life. And so now you become a new creature. If any person is in Christ, they become a new creature, right? Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You become a new creature in Christ. You're a new creation. And so God has given everybody that opportunity because he said, if he be lifted up, he would draw all men unto himself. And he was lifted up 2000 years ago. And he's drawn all men unto himself, all of humanity unto himself. And he's saying, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and he'll give you rest. But how many people want rest? They said, no. Most of the world says, no, I want to work. I don't want rest. I will not have Jesus Christ to reign over me. I don't want anything to do with Jesus, says the wicked. And that's their soul. It's their choice. <laughs> you see, because no one can be forced into the kingdom. Right? No one can be forced to be born again. Okay. God says you have a choice now. Okay. You didn't have a choice to be to be born into the world. No, that, that, there was no choice in that. But now God says if you want to live. Hallelujah. My goodness. Now, 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 here comes a choice. <laughs> okay. You see? Now here's a choice. He said, God says take it or leave it. Okay, now you got a choice. You got free will. 
Okay, you 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 got you got to count the cost. You, you know what, what what what's in the balance? What's in the balance? Okay, you got you got two scales, right? You got two scales. You got to count the cost. What's it gonna be? Okay, sin, the passing pleasures of sin, whatever it is that is your fancy that you love to do, you got it over here, and then you put Jesus over here, and you, and you, and, you, and you look at you look you look at the scale. Well, well, which way which way is it gonna turn? Okay, which way is it gonna turn? Have, have you counted the cost? Is is it worth it? Is the passing pleasures of sin worth it? And if you say if you say it's worth it, well, your soul. But if if you look to Jesus, hallelujah, <laughs> the author and finisher of our faith, and you look at him and you see what he's done, okay, and you compare it to the passing pleasures of sin, is no contest because Christ will set you free, hallelujah. For who the Son sets free, we are free indeed. And so you count the cost and you say, you know what, Lord, I'm done. Okay. I'm done living that old life. I need a new heart. Hallelujah. I'm done living in the pig pen. I want to walk down a narrow road. I'm done sinking in the shifting sands of this world. I need a solid foundation. I need to rock. Have you counted the cost? You see, because if you counted the cost, you will value Christ above everything. That this world has to offer. And you will say yes Lord. Because I know even though. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. Hallelujah. I know. Okay. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. But I know that when he appears. Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay. When he appears. We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. They said. James Smith preacher man. Man, you over here talking about that blind faith. That's a that's a shot in the dark. I know who the crooked serpent is. That's what I do know. I know who I, I know what's coming out the side of your mouth right now, old crooked serpent. <laughs> Cause ain't no shot in the dark. I walk in the light. Hallelujah. You see, faith is based upon facts. Hallelujah. Okay. Faith is based upon evidence. Okay, there ain't no shot in the dark. <laughs> I'm walking in the light. Okay, uh, the, the proof is in the doing. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, the proof is in the doing. And when you come to God, he's going to make himself strong. Hallelujah. He's going to make himself strong on behalf of those who believe. Faith is based upon evidence. There ain't no shot in the dark. <laughs> no blind faith over here. I'm talking about facts. Okay, talking about facts. I got a new heart. And who gave me a new heart? The King of Glory. Who is the King of Glory? Jesus Christ, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. The one who did it all for me. The one who took a high school dropout, a drug addict, fornicator, adulterer, cheater, everything down the list, and made him into a new creation. He changed my life. Used to be hooked on dope, hooked on cigarettes, hooked on everything under the sun except Jesus. Until I met Jesus. My goodness. Ain't, no, ain't nothing blind about it. Okay. God says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. You got a testimony? You got a testimony of where God brought you out of. You got a testimony of God brought you out the mud pit and put you on solid rock. You got a testimony? Ain't nothing blind about it. Okay. Faith is based upon evidence. Okay. It's evidence. Hallelujah. Okay. A tree is known by the fruit it bears. If I go to a banana tree, I'm getting bananas. Okay. Now, if I go to a banana tree and I see apples, something in the milk ain't clean. Okay. A tree is known by the fruit it bears. Okay, don't tell me that there's some blind about faith. You're walking in the dark. God forbid walking in no dark. Okay, Bible says when that day comes, no one can work. Okay, we got to walk while it's light. Okay, we got to walk while it is day. I'm walking in the light as Christ is in the light because he is the light. Ain't no blind faith about anything. Faith is based upon evidence. You got evidence. Jesus Christ says, come. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
You see, I just let the Holy Spirit do what he does. I, I want to talk about this, but he evidently he wanted to talk to somebody out there about faith. Hallelujah. And so here we see 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the order of the resurrection. Now check this, verse 23. This is the whole crux of everything. But there is an order to the resurrection. Okay, so there's an order to this first resurrection and check it out. There is an order to the first resurrection. Check it out. Verse 23. Christ, the first fruits. Okay, so Christ is the first fruits. When did Christ rise? He rose at the barley harvest, right? Leviticus 23, verse 10, right? Leviticus 23, verse 10, the first time we see a first fruit offering connected to one of the Moedim of God, one of the appointed times of God, one of his feast. Leviticus 23 tells us, let me just show it to you that God has seven feasts. Well, actually eight if you count Shabbat, which is a weekly feast. But seven annual feasts, hallelujah, God has, and he says that they are his feast. Hallelujah. They're his feast. They don't belong to the Jews. They belong to him. They, they belong to uh, God, Jesus. Hallelujah. yod heh vav -Hey. And Jesus said, I and the Father are one. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. Because all the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in bodily form, okay? The full measure of who God is fully dwelt in the Son of Man, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. In him, the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. So if you see Jesus, sirs, we see Jesus, hallelujah. You've seen the Father. How say it showeth us the Father? Hallelujah. Okay. And so we see in Leviticus chapter 23 that the first time that a first fruit offering is mentioned in connection with one of the feasts is the feast of first fruits, which is the barley harvest. Leviticus 23 verse 9. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when you come into the land, which I give to you and reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. Okay. So that's the first time that we see first fruits connected to one of the seven feasts of the Lord. And this is the barley harvest where Jesus Christ is, is said to have risen. And he did, hallelujah, at this very time after he was crucified on Passover. Right? He was crucified on Passover. And three days later, which is the barley harvest, which is the feast of first fruits, he rose from the dead. Okay, early that morning, hallelujah. Uh, the tomb was empty. The stone was rolled away, not to let Jesus out, but to let the disciples in to see that he has risen, just like he said that he would do. Hallelujah, because it's impossible for God to lie. He said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. That's what God said. Well, what do you mean? What, what do you mean three days I will raise it up? I thought God raised Jesus from the dead. Well, Jesus Christ is God. Hallelujah. You got all these people out here, man. You got a lot of false prophets. My goodness. You got a lot of false prophets. As a matter of fact, there's this guy. You see, there's this guy that speaks right before me on the Now Network. And, you know, he got all this Jewish stuff. I'm praying for him. He got all this Jewish stuff. But he comes on right before I do. And I was listening to him. And, of course, you know, here he comes with this nonsense. Oh, Jesus Christ is in God. And I said, my goodness. They got me lined up right behind a false prophet. And so, hey, it is what it is, right? <laughs> it is what it is, but hey, God says that there will be many, right, who will come in the last day saying, I am the Christ, right? This is what God said. God said, be not deceived. Right? There's many people who are talking about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But Jesus, this is what Jesus said. Hallelujah. I'm talking about God now. Okay, when you deny the deity of Christ, woo, you talk about you talk about shaky sand. Jesus Christ said this. He said, except this is what Jesus said. He said, except you believe that I am He. Speaking about that I am title, Jesus Christ said, except you believe that I am that same I am. That I am that spoke to Moses out the burning bush. Aye, Esher, Aye. Okay, I am that I am. That same I am, hallelujah, that was speaking to Moses out the burning bush, which was Jesus, the word of God. 
Jesus Christ, when he became flesh and dwelt among us, we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ said, except you, me, anybody who wants to come to him, except you believe that I am he. What did he say? You shall die in your sin. I didn't write the book. Okay. I didn't write the book. I didn't write this. Nope. God never said, hey, James Smith, what you think? What do you, you think about John chapter 10, verse 30? James Smith, what you think? God never asked me. He never consulted with me. Okay. Never consulted with me. No. I'm a Johnny come lately, here today, gone today. And now it's my watch. And by the grace of God, I am what I am. And by the grace of God, I'm going to declare what thus saith the Lord. I don't care what anybody else has to say. If it doesn't line up with scripture, you are wrong. Okay. And now if you talk, if you talking, okay. If, and now if you talking, uh, this, 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 this gibberish, which is, you know, this lie that Jesus Christ isn't God. Well, hey, come on. You ain't talking, we ain't talking, we ain't talking about the same Jesus. The moment you deny the deity of Christ, we're not, we, we, we've ceased to talk about the same Jesus. Okay, because you don't even have a savior. Okay, you don't have a savior. If, 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 the, if the Jesus you are worshiping and talking about is not God manifested in the flesh, I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know, I don't know. You talk, I, well, I do know who you're talking about, but you ain't talking about the same one I'm talking about. <laughs> you're talking about the deception. You're talking about what Jesus, the true Jesus, warned me about. Okay, That's what you're talking about. And you've been deceived. You've been hoodwinked. You've been bamboozled and led astray. God have mercy. Okay, And you think you know it all. You can't. No one can tell you nothing because it's evident that you don't want to let the Holy Spirit teach you and show you the error of your ways. Talking about that Jesus Christ isn't God. Can you have so much audacity to even say that? But plenty of people say it. Plenty of people said, they said, oh, Jesus Christ isn't God. With proudness, too, with proudness. They got proudness and they, and they talk. Can you imagine these people? Imagine these people on the last day, dead in their sins, believed, believed a lie, and they crying out, Lord, Lord. But, 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 but Lord, Lord, we did here. But, 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 but Lord, Lord, we, 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 we did that. But, but, but Lord, 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 we did, we, we, we did this, that, and third. But you never believed, right? You did all these other things, but you, but the, but the record is, Matthew chapter seven, the record is, what's, what's the record? What's the receipts? Okay, let's go there. My goodness. You see, <laughs> hey, you see, when the Holy Spirit want to flow, the Holy, the Holy Spirit, he want to flow, hallelujah. And so I let him. So help me God. Let, 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 let's look at the receipts. Amen. Okay, look at the facts. Say, give me the facts, Jack. Okay, this, this, this is this, this, this is the receipts. Okay, you talking about you believe in Jesus? Oh, do you? Okay, verse twenty one, Matthew chapter seven. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh oh, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. What's the will of the Father? Okay, that you believe on the one whom He has sent. That's the will of the Father. Okay, that you believe on the one whom he has sent. That's the will of the father. And so what you over here doing? Oh, well, let's see what you're doing. Okay, because you ain't, you ain't believing in God manifested in the flesh. You ain't believing in Emmanuel. You're saying, no, God can't become a man. Jesus Christ, he's not God. Okay, so this is what you're doing. Okay. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father in heaven. Many, not a few, not most. Okay, God said many. Okay, many, however many it is, I don't know. There's gonna be many. I already see many today. Okay, talking this, talking this gibberish. Woe, woe unto their soul if they don't repent. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Okay. Oh, look, 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 look at me. I'm, I'm prophesying in Jesus' name. I, just, I saw something crazy too. My goodness. I just shook my head. I saw this one guy. He said, oh, and this, this is another, you know, it's been out there for a while. But I'm just, I'd be flabbergasted at these people. And, you know, they got all the theatrics, you know, the people in the background prophesy. 
And he said, oh, uh, you back there. I, I saw gold dust. I saw gold dust coming down upon your head. And then people in the background, prophesy, prophesy. I saw gold dust. <laughs> I was just shaking my head. Gold dust, is that, 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 that's prophesying. Huh? I saw gold dust. Come on. I mean, these people, these people crazy. <laughs> okay. I saw gold dust and you're going to have a business. And I saw gold dust and you're going to prosper. And I saw gold dust and you're going to be this, that, and the third because I saw gold dust coming down upon your head. Is that, is that what Christianity is all about now? That's prophesying? I mean, these people. You talk about the church of Laodicea. <laughs> I saw gold dust. Well, where, where, where's that at in the word of God? Oh, church of Laodicea. Yeah, that's where it's at. Okay. I, I saw gold dust. That, that's the word of the Lord today. Huh? <laughs> well, I got you. Ezekiel chapter 7. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 7 is, is gold dust. For all you left behind. Okay, you talk about gold dust. They shall cast their silver and their gold into the streets. That's utterly worthless. Dark and cloudy day. Night, night. I got your gold dust. <laughs> got your gold dust. Okay. Got your gold dust. God said he's going to spew out of his mouth. Left behind. Vomited. Ooh. Where your gold dust at now? Oh, worthless. Where your gold dust at now? Oh, rubbish. Where your gold dust at now? Oh, hide rays on your butt. Look at this. Look at this. Matthew chapter 7. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. Everything. Oh, I did this. I did that. Oh, I prophesied gold dust. Last day you over there before the you over there before a great white throne crying out on your knees. Last day before God. Can you imagine these people? But, but, but God, I, I prophesy gold dust. But, 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 but Lord, Lord, I, I, I prophesy gold dust. Can you imagine these people on the last day standing for, before God? <laughs> and then God hit, God hit the tapes. He got, he got the receipts now. You talk about the receipts. He got the tapes, everything. <laughs> everything. Even what we do see, he got it. Okay. Even... God said, I know every one of your thoughts even before they come into your mind. He got the receipts. The book of works. Break it out. Last day. Break it out. Okay. Last day. Break them out. Okay. Courtroom full of light. No darkness at all. Okay. Last day. Great white throne. Courtroom. Nothing but light. Turn it on now. Last day, courtroom, number light. Turn it on now. Okay. Last day, courtroom, number light. Ooh. Okay. And on, on the last day, God shows you the receipts. Oh, but, but, and, and you say, but, but, but Lord, look, look, I, I was prophesying gold dust. Come on. Prophesying gold dust. That's what that, that, that that's where we're at nowadays. I mean, but it's been here. It's been here. It's been here though. You see? But that whole list, right? That whole list, it never said anything about believing. Right? I'm doing all this. But did you believe? Jesus Christ said, except you believe that I am He, God in the flesh, you shall die in your sins. They don't say that here though. Okay, that's the record that God already called out <laughs> because he knows the end from the beginning. He already got the record. He already, he, he's already at the great white throne. He's already in eternity. He's the one who inhabits eternity. He's already there. We're just trying to catch up. And when we all catch up on that day, well, let God be true in every man alive. I know what it says. Hallelujah. <laughs> and Jesus Christ said, except you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Amen. <laughs> Let's get back on point, you see. I just really wanted to talk about, you know, the first resurrection. But <laughs> you know what the Bible says. 
Man may play, uh, may may plan his steps, right? But the Lord is the one who orders them, right? Okay, I'm, I may plan it, but the Lord is the one who orders it. Amen. And I praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, for ordering my steps. Amen. May I decrease so that you can increase. Hallelujah. Because it's all about him. Hallelujah. Not what I, not what James Smith does. No. It doesn't matter. Okay. Nothing I do in the flesh, is, it means diddly squat. And I pray that I could always do stuff in the spirit. Okay. As I walk in the spirit and live in the spirit. So that I can obey the spirit. Right. Because I just want to please the Lord. Amen. And believe. Yes and amen to everything he says. Hallelujah. So the order of the resurrection. Verse 23. Again. First Corinthians chapter 15. The order of the resurrection is this. Christ is the first fruits. Okay. So. We, we just went over that. Christ is the first fruits. Barley harvest. He rose on the feast of first fruits. Leviticus 23, verse 10. Then, what does he say? Verse 23. Then, those who are Christ at his coming. Those who are Christ at his coming. So how does Christ come? Well, we know that his coming happens in two stages. He comes in the clouds first. Right? That's the day of sudden destruction. That's the day that comes like a thief in the night. That's when the day of the Lord begins. And the first thing that happens is the blessing has to come first. What's the blessing? The blessed hope, right? The glorious appearing of our great God and Savior when the Lord himself descends from heaven as he comes like lightning from east to west with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And what? The dead in Christ are going to rise first. <clears throat> then those of us who are alive and remain are also going to be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So, those that are Christ at his coming, it begins when he comes on the clouds, right? That's the first step. And that's the next order to the resurrection. When Jesus Christ comes on the clouds. And we, you know, we could talk forever about that. But who's going to meet him at that time? Well, God is going to, you know, set up the heavenly tabernacle according to the model that he gave to Moses on Mount Sinai. Ark of the Covenant is seen first. Right when we go through the door. The next two items that have to be put in. Is a table of showbread and the menorah. The table of showbread goes in first. And then the altar of incense. And then the door shut. And so we see that whole event play out in the book of Revelation. And so the table of showbread and menorah. Are the two items that are going to be put in. At the time. When Jesus Christ comes down on the clouds. And it's interesting that both um, the table of showbread and the menorah have first fruits mentioned with it. Because the Bible says, according to God's feast, right, there's three feasts. <laughs> there's three feasts where God says everybody has to appear before him, all the men. And when the men appeared before him, they brought their families. So all the men had to appear before God at three feasts. Right, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. And it's interesting that the barley harvest, right, the Feast of First Fruits, fell in the midst of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Christ was the fulfillment of that. The next feast where everybody has to appear before him, right, is the Feast of Weeks, better known as Shavuot. Right? And at the Feast of Weeks, that's the final feast of the Lord's feast where there is a mention of a first fruit offering. Okay. Leviticus 23 verse 17 is just one such scripture. Okay. Because if we let God be true and every man a liar, well, God is true and every man a liar. Leviticus 23 verse 15. I'll begin there. And you shall count for yourselves. From the day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, say uh, seven Sabbaths shall be completed. Okay, so he's talking about you got to count from the feast of first fruits, which was the barley harvest. You got to count seven Sabbaths from there. Verse 16, count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. Then you shall offer a new grain offering to the Lord. You shall bring from your dwellings two wave loaves of two tenths of an ephah. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be bacon with leaven. They are first fruits to the Lord. So these two loaves are called first fruits. Okay. After this, 
feast, there's no more mention of a first fruit offering connected to the three fall feasts, which is Feast of Trumpets, Yom Kippur, and Tabernacles, Feast of Ingathering. There's no first fruit offering mentioned. The last first fruit offering is offered at the Feast of Weeks. Well, that's interesting because both the menorah and the table of showbread is mentioned as being first fruits. And so if everything has to match and everything does have to match, we see in Romans chapter 8, verse 23, one such scripture where the menorah is m mentioned as being first fruits. First fruits unto God. Romans chapter 8, verse 23 says this. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, hallelujah. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. Okay, so in the context of the mention of us having the first fruits of the Spirit, it's talking about the resurrection, the redemption of our body, hallelujah. So anybody who has the first fruits of the spirit, which is who? The body of Christ, the menorah. Okay. Well, we fall into the category of the feast of weeks that has a first fruit offering, but there's two loaves, remember? And so the second first fruit offering that we also see is in Revelation chapter 14. Hallelujah. Because there's two loaves. Revelation chapter 14, verse 14. Uh, uh, verse 4, I mean. Revelation chapter 14, verse 4, we see this. These are the ones who are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being first fruits to God and to the Lamb. Okay? <laughs> so God says that the 144,000 are first fruits. God says that those who have the first fruits of the Spirit are groaning for the redemption of our body. There's two loaves that have to be presented at the Feast of Weeks, which is the final um, feast of the Lord that has a first fruit offering. And so there's two items that are going to be put in at the time when Jesus Christ comes on the clouds, which is the table of showbread and the menorah. The math is mathing. But the question is, are you mathing? Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. And so... The table of showbread and the menorah happen in the clouds. Remember, this is the order of the resurrection. Those who are Christ at his coming. So when seven years have passed on the earth, the Bible tells us that heaven is open and Jesus Christ comes on a white horse and the armies of heaven are following him on white horses and we all come to the earth and the thrones are set up. Revelation chapter 20, right? The Antichrist and the false prophet is put into the lake of fire. The dragon is chained into the bottomless pit. And a seal is set over him for a thousand years so that he won't deceive the nations. And then the thrones of the kingdom are set up and judgment is committed unto us. We're given our positions. And Jesus Christ tells us that those who were beheaded during that time for the witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who did not worship the beast or his image, and did not receive the mark on their foreheads or on their hands, they all came back to life, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. This is the first resurrection. That's the completion. That's the feast of end gathering. That's the fall feast, right? That's the fall feast. There's no mention of a first fruit offering. That's why there's no mention of a first fruit in connection with the tribulation saints, right? All the tribulation saints are raised when Jesus Christ comes on the white horse to the earth, right? That's when they're all raised back to life. They're all under the altar, okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble that we see in the book of Revelation, the fifth seal, the martyrs are under the altar crying out, but they haven't received their bodies yet. They don't receive their bodies until Jesus Christ comes on the white horse, like the order of the resurrection tells us, those who are Christ at his coming. So in the clouds, table of showbread and menorah. To the earth, okay, those who were beheaded during the time of Jacob's trouble, 
That's the first resurrection. Right? And that completes it. Hallelujah. That's the first resurrection. So I pray that you understood that. And I pray that you were blessed. Please keep me in your prayers. You know, please keep me in your prayers as uh, uh, I continue to do uh, what God tells me to do. I'm thankful that you have been praying for me, family of God. Uh, my first showing comes on. Well, it came on yesterday. It was like a, a little mix up with the programming last week. So they gave me two bonus airings, which praise God. So I had my first bonus airing yesterday, which was uh, Wednesday. And then I have a second bonus airing talking about the now network um sunday uh june 11th at 8 p.m eastern standard time but then i also have my regular program this friday 7 30 p.m eastern standard time hallelujah so please keep me in prayer for that and yeah like i said you know i'm right before this false prophet who doesn't believe that jesus christ is god so pray for that man but what do you do? You keep on occupying until he comes declaring the truth of what thus saith the Lord. Amen. No matter what. Because in this world, we're going to have opposition. In this world, we're going to have trials. In this world, we're going to have tribulations. Okay. The wicked flee when no one's pursued. But the righteous were bold as a lion. So I'm standing upon the rock. In the midst of all this turmoil and adversity and all these wolves on every side. And I'm looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And I'm trusting in him because he's the one who's carrying me through. No matter all the storms of life, he got me. He got you too, because why? He's the anchor of our soul. Hallelujah. And we trust in him. Though the sea may roar, though the waves may crash. Hallelujah. Though the winds may blow, though the rain may descend. In this will I be confident that Jesus Christ, he loves me. Hallelujah. Because he loves me. I love him. Hallelujah. And because we have intimate fellowship, I could call upon him at all times. I could seek and I'll find him. I can knock and it will be open. Hallelujah. I can ask and I'll receive. Hallelujah. And so I'm thankful that I have this connection with the source of every good and perfect gift that comes down from him, the father of lights. What else can I ask for except Giving praise to God for him being my everything. I got everything that I need, which is him. An endless supply of love, an endless supply of truth, an endless supply of wisdom, an endless supply of knowledge, an endless supply of understanding, an endless supply of grace, an endless supply of mercy, an endless supply of everything that is righteous and good and holy. And it's an endless supply of him. And so I'm praising his name forever. And I know we're singing the same song, the Hallelujah Chorus. And I can't wait to sing that new song with you in the kingdom of God. And please keep praying for this book as well. I'm still doing that and for this channel as God continues to use me. And I just pray that God will continue to use you and bless you and set a hedge of protection around you at all times. For surely he comes quickly. I love you, family of God. Maranatha. Amen.